Good day, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. We're going to make something that I have never made. Well, quinoa. I make quinoa a lot. I like quinoa. Um, I have never made chocolate covered bananas. And so, um, let's see. All right. Thank you, Deepa, for sharing your information. And is this something unusual for you to make? Yeah, thank you, everybody. Yeah, yeah. For me, this is something new, but uh, I really liked it, the combination, actually. It's, it's like a proper meal, and it's easy to make. Not much of uh, recipes, like ingredients, very few ingredients, and very healthy. And you can always improvise it with, you can make a vegan or vegetarian, or you can throw some meat in there. So you can make okay, your you, own. You had me until you said healthy. I mean, um, I like, actually I lie, I like healthy food. But as soon as you say food and healthy, I start thinking, eh, it must not taste very good. But so. this is like, with minimum amount, minimal amount of recipe ingredients, this is the best I think I can make. <laughs> okay. So, and so what, really, yeah. Easy. What are the three things we're making? We're making quinoa, quinoa. and then and um, with cottage cheese, and another one is dessert. I would say it's a chocolate covered banana. So. So the the spinach is it. Do, do, are you are you doing it similar to like the um I'm trying, honey. sag like the sag like uh indian spinach or nepal or oh no that would be best but i just got from store like store bought like one pack of spinach okay so do you always use fresh you ever use canned or frozen no, I think that has like some steel kind of taste that I like. Yeah. Always fresh. Like I think it's very food. interesting that in America, we have no problem eating canned stuff, but the majority of the world has a hard time eating canned food. It is actually. You consider it bad. So, um, so I have fresh spinach that I actually got from my uh my friend Orlin last week, it was the last of his winter spinach. Mm -hmm. So I've got a bag of that. Oh, okay. I've got, I happened to buy quinoa about three weeks ago. I actually have like a whole bunch of it, but I bought here, let me switch it over to the other camera so you can see here. So I, I bought an actual little bag of quinoa. Um, I really like quinoa because I consider it like high in protein. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it has, I don't know, it has kind of a nice nutty flavor. And so you don't need to add very much. And it comes in lots of different colors, but the most common one is the white, right? And it cooks oh. pretty fast. Oh yeah, very fast. I usually do it in the rice cooker. So, all right, boss me around. Sure, okay. Uh Let's start with blanching our spinach a little bit so that the taste, the rawness, just goes away. For that. So just a, blanch just a little hot water. Yeah, just I'm just boiling the water. It's just getting boiled. So. Now you could, that's <laughs> the same hot water we could use to make the, make the quinoa in. Then yeah, that's the hot water. Yeah, same. I, I always use the same because the nutrient from blanch blanching would be there, so I don't want to waste that. So, always I do that. so when I went to the store, the only banana they had was this super green one. I always buy the one that's like super ripe because oh. I'm, you know, want to eat it. And the only one, so I was like, oh, they have the wrong banana. And then I was like, wait. The green ones are harder and so they're easier to slice and less mushy so maybe this is the perfect banana for this recipe okay is I that right know. i don't know if that's right <laughs> yeah it's probably not right 
But um, <laughs> if we cover it with enough chocolate, it'll taste good. But yeah. unripe bananas are bitter. Like it has some yeah. other kind of taste. Yeah, they're not naturally <laughs> sweet. So I don't know. But yep, yeah, that's the only one. So I'm using quinoa. Um, I got it from Chicago. This this part, this brand. It's, I, think this is I don't think they grow quinoa in Chicago. No, but they send it. <laughs> it's just like. Where is quinoa? I, isn't quinoa like native to Peru? I think so. Here it says super grain of the Andes. So I'm sure it's grown a lot. Of, I actually have friends around here that grow it, but it's so hard. The seeds are so little teeny that it's like so hard to harvest it. So they grow it and they don't really harvest it because it's hard. Oh. To, okay, so I've got the hot water. So I'm just rinsing the quinoa just one time. It's because it was in the packet, so I didn't want it. So do you rinse all grains before you cook it? Yeah. <laughs> I noticed that that's a, a, a trend that a lot of people do. But I didn't I notice know, yeah. Americans really do that. The, the quinoa I have says it's pre-washed. Oh, let me read. But you see those are pretty well, but uh, I don't like to say I don't trust them, but I like to be more, you know, like I want it to be washed myself. I so my, my directions on the back of mine, step one, rinse quinoa thoroughly prior to cooking to remove any residue. I've never read the directions, apparently. All right. Yeah. I think they also say to rinse it. So, oh, my my water is boiling. I guess I could put all the spinach in it. Yeah, if it's boiling, yeah. Let's see. The spinach should probably pull pull the stems off of it, right? If there's any big no, stems? No, no, we don't need that. I mean, we will be using all of it because we will be uh, blending it later on. Like, if oh, okay. So don't waste any of it. Just yeah, put it all in. Just everything. All right. This is some beautiful spinach. Yeah, when I saw that, he told me this was the last of his winter spinach. Oh, and I was so excited this morning. He got the first of the his winter carrots were out. So that was exciting for me. F Fred, you don't have that problem in California. You can get stuff. At any yeah, time, we have San, San Joaquin Valley. They grow all year round. Here, we, we have a lot of, the, in the last couple of years, we have a lot of farmers who've gotten hoop houses and greenhouses. And so we can start getting stuff in the winter, not shipped in all the way from California. So. So, or your spinach must be from a greenhouse, eh? If it's winter yep. spinach? Yep. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he's got a nice big greenhouse. And yeah, this morning I bought, here, let me show you this carrots. Have this. Look at this is, look at these carrots. There's this, this, oh. the, the top. And then there's these little wow. cute little, very super sweet carrots on the bottom. Mm, wow, nice. That's tiny. But did you know I that you can eat? Top. Did you know that you can eat the tops? Yeah. I didn't know that until I had a guy from China on my um, rice and spice cooking, and we made a Chinese carrot and cucumber stir fry. Oh. And two things I would have never, ever, ever thought of stir frying. No, carrot tops and cucumbers. How did and they I taste? Like I would think they were bitter. I would think so too. Yeah. Um, they are slightly, but you add, he added like just like you do with mustard greens or collard greens in the U.S. You put a little vinegar in it, and it dampens yeah. that. And then the cucumbers really gave it a light, refreshing taste. So between the two, you know, you you basically covered the gambit of flavors. You had sour vinegar, bitter greens, 
light refreshing cucumber and then you put a little sugar in it and then a little uh, soy sauce for anami and you've covered all the tastes. All right. I've almost got my spin. Do you live in the San Joaquin Valley? Sorry. No, I just, no? we just mentioned that because that's where they grow all the food in California. Oh, that's where my aunt, uh, she married an American and went down and lived in Tulare, California. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's uh, where all the food is grown. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, I think I need to turn uh, my spinach will... down. It's blanching a little too quick here. Yeah, and now we will throw this into boiling water. Spinach. Are okay. you, you're really just cooking it a minute or so, Deepa? Yeah, just a minute. Just Blanching. Blanching. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, basically, I wilted it all down, and once it's all wilted, I shut it off. All right. But I had I had a big bag. It's amazing how how much it disappears, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll so. the bag and then I'll all right. Off. So washing the quinoa, and then you said I needed my blender, huh? Yeah. All right. I've got a blender. This blender is probably 30 years old. It's amazing. When you blanch, are you throwing it into the ice or just cold water? Ice water, if you oh. have it. And I have ice. cold water, but not ice water. Right. Yeah, cold water is fine, but if you have ice, that's better. So. All right. Making like a ball finish. Kind of this. Doing my little shuffle in my little teeny kitchen here. All right. So I suppose if I cool off this in the water, I can save that water also. Yeah. Don't, save, don't... save it for stock. Oh. We're going to cook the quinoa in this water. Oh, that's right. right. Yeah, you're right. I forgot. So I'll cool this off. Oh, oh here. Drain as much hot water out and then cool it off with some cold water. Yeah, I'll add a little bit of water in it so it's easier to, it's, it's easier to blend. I'm behind already. I haven't got my spinach blanched yet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> I mean, we have time. I mean, we still uh, well, no, you, you go ahead. I'll just watch what to do. <laughs> okay. No, it's, we've just got three three little things here to do. But um, yeah, you guys. Uh, yeah, basically, I just brought the water to boil and then dumped the whole like gallon bag of spinach in there, and then it just kind of reduced down in about a minute. To yeah, it's gonna I take just... it's gonna take a long time because we have to wait till Oris bananas ripen. <laughs> <laughs> just like... Oh wait, you said you're probably gonna need some water in this in the blender, right? That's what she said. Yeah. I dumped all the water out and now I'm gonna to need to pour some back in. Do you think I could put that whole bit in there? That's a lot. Let me just put half first. I don't have my big blender in here. My big blender is out in the kitchen the garage. Yeah, this has got a lot of stems in it, but I really like the stems. All right, I'll put one tablespoon. Did you, Deepa, did you already blend yours? I'm going to turn the sound off for a second to blend it. You're muted, Deepa. I think she muted herself because she's using her no, blender. She's muted. You're muted, Deepa. We can't hear you. There oh, okay. Sorry. I was using my blender, so. Um, okay. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> okay. So, so we both did it at the same time and nobody was talking. 
Okay, uh, the ratio of quinoa is one cup of quinoa equals to two cups of water. So that's all. And okay. are you using the water from, I because I, I strained my spinach okay. in an ice bath. So I have the water from the spinach. Would I cook the quinoa in that? Oh yeah, yes, don't waste that. that. Yeah, yeah I, I use that one only. So the spinach is going into the food, the blender? Yeah. Yeah. Along with anything else at this time? A little bit of water in it so it's easier to blend. Just that. Okay. Now, how smooth are we making it? It's just still Smoother, pretty. Like fine paste kind of. Oh. oh. <laughs> I was just making it chunky here. And, um, uh, with the quinoa, are we, did you say two cups of boiling water to one cup of quinoa? Uh, whatever water is available, it doesn't matter, but the water should be, the ratio is like one cup of quinoa equals to two cups of water. Isn't that the same recipe for like rice? Yeah, Yeah, but um, some rice use less water, some rice use more. Just say, like if we say I'm using American rice and it it's a little bit less water, but if I'm using basmati rice, then it uses a little bit more. If I'm using white rice, then a little bit more water. Brown, brown, rice, less, brown rice, less water. Yeah, brown rice, less water. And an inst, and an no. interesting, interestingly, in an Instapot, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Oh. Okay. It doesn't boil away. Yeah, so I mean, like, recipes, you know, when recipes call for an example, an egg. <laughs> Here, I'll... The chicken and the duck. You know, an egg. Here's here's two eggs, right? I got. Oh. One's half the size of the other, right? <laughs> I mean, like, recipes are like outlines, right? They can't be very specific, like you know, yep. if it says an egg. Yeah. Or. Yep. Or if it says, you know. An onion, which you know, which size? <laughs> Just like, <laughs> right. yeah. So, um, are you going to cook the quinoa or just put boiling water on it and let it absorb the? No, I'm cooking it. Uh, you put oh. boil, boiling water and then put it in a gas and then let it cook. Okay, I'm behind oh, on that. Okay. So, did you add anything to the quinoa or is it plain? No, it is bland. I am not even adding salt because uh, I'm making a little bit more. So I can use it as quinoa salad or I can use it with stir fry veggies. Or I can oh, I did. Also add salt. I think salt. this is the first time I've ever rinsed my quinoa. In the past, I was just like, if it has a little dirt in it, it's extra good, right? So okay. I don't know. Now, I think uh, rinsing it once. This takes away that, you know, the there is a little bit of bitterness if we don't rinse it. So if you rinse it, it doesn't have that bit of bitterness. So I, think I always like uh, rinsing. I know. Yeah, I know I've, when I want to make a really good rice, I rinse rice because I notice this. That is. But for quinoa, we can always put a little bit of butter or a little bit of salt or one cardamom or one clove to make it a little bit. Cardamom, okay. huh? I love cardamom. Yeah, one cardamom, just put it in the top and then just let it simmer for some time, so. Ooh, now I want to do that. Can I do that now? Sure, why not? Even <laughs> clove, if you have a clove, you can put one clove and one cardamom. It, it just smells so good. But just like the, the whole seed. Okay, where is my? Yeah, whole seed. So Fred, you turned me on to the Szechuan pepper. I got yeah. I got one of these little grinders. And you can see this has been a week and I've already ate like a third of it. So I just yeah. I have it on my table and I just put that on everything. Your mouth tingle? Yeah. Just like I got party in my mouth. I gotta send you some more because I got plenty. <laughs> All right, so I am, let's see. So I need to find, where's my cardamom? I, my problem is, is 
Yeah. A lot of it I have pre-ground. Where is it? Oh, I've got like a whole board of it somewhere here. Again, too many spices. And one clove. Yeah, in the U.S., there it is. Um, in the U.S., we think of uh, cloves as only to put in sweet things. Even in savory things, it's good putting cloves, I think. We, we do put it in savory things, cloves. So. You don't or you do? We do. We do okay. put it. Okay, I'm just putting in a pan right now to cook, I mean, we can cook it in saucepan. It doesn't have like any preference pot or something, whatever we have right now, this is. Um, I like doing uh, quinoa in the rice cooker. Oh, no, I'm yeah. just, yeah, I also cook it in rice cooker, but uh, I'm just trying, if somebody doesn't have rice cooker, they can always put it in saucepan and then just let it simmer for some time. And then, we don't need to close it, it will be like really yeah, on, the, on the stove, you uh, add the water in the quinoa to get it, or what we call a rolling boil. And then you oh, okay. reduce the heat and put the lid on it. So yeah, mm -hmm. both cardamom and cloves are really strong. So like you said, just put one. Yeah, just one, one each. So usually I put it in the grinder, but like, I don't know. Oh. The, the pods yeah yeah i mean just they smell, smell amazing but usually i just take it and i put it in the grinder and grind it up and now the cloves I'm... the cloves i usually save it when you get a toothache you put it on there and it'll stop yeah. your tooth from breaking well in the middle east they in the middle east they they put uh, cardamom in the coffee sometimes too so when I usually do quinoa in my rice cooker, I will um, put like uh, half a cup of red lentils in there also. Mm, nice. And it just disappears, but it adds, you know, it pops up the protein and the flavor. But that's, I don't know, that's my go-to. Yeah, All and right. if you're cooking in a stock and like in a stock, quinoa always put it in medium high or around that so it doesn't get burned, but it cooks thoroughly. Oh, thanks for the reminder. I've got it like wide open because I was blowing the spinach. Yeah, I got it. So. Okay, now we're going to be cooking spinach. So for that, we need to heat up a pan like hot, hot heated. So. A fry pan or a, a pan with a lid? Anything works. Anything works. It, it doesn't have to be something. Now I need to shuffle. Um, the, I have tofu instead of the cottage cheese. Works. Okay. Yep. If you have already, uh, have you baked or fried or it just... Uh, just it's just it in the container. Oh, okay. We can just yeah, rinse it a little bit and then you can just crumble it up a little bit. Okay, so it and has how much? To, so I have quite a bit of spinach. I have probably maybe close to a pound of spinach, or it's a large, very large bag. So well, I did a pound of spinach, and it ended up being less than a cup after it, it was so half of spinach. it. Yeah, half of that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what we can do is, uh, we can crumble it a little bit for tofu, and we can a uh, little bit fry it on oil or something a little bit so it doesn't have that like tofu taste with it. But if you like the taste of tofu, then we can like put it in the end. It doesn't really matter. So go ahead and, and fry it up a little bit, brown it, you say? Yeah, a little bit, just a little bit. I, I usually You're just crumple it in the there. the spinach after it's already been blended? Well, yeah. cooking it now. Oh, it hasn't been good. cooked yet. Basically, cooking it into like a sauce, maybe, or a, what is um, it? Have you ever been to an Indian restaurant where you make you have like the spinach paneer? Yeah. Paneer, yeah. I like paneer. I, looking at this recipe, it seems similar to paneer. Is it well, like, paneer? 
Paneer but is the cheese. Cottage cheese yeah. instead of their cheese. Paneer cheese. Yeah. Yeah. So right I'm using two tablespoons of butter. If you like butter more, you can put butter, or you can, uh, if you're vegan, you can always substitute this with coconut butter or something like that, coconut oil. Um, did I miss some spices? I, I think, yeah. Did you put any spices in anything yet? Cardamom and uh, clove. No, that was just me changing oh. the recipe. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought oh. you were yeah, so so Deepa's but... recipe so far has no flavors unless you want to put a little butter or a ghee in the pan. Mm -hmm. Or a little bit salt or uh, some spices if you want, but it's always you can improvise it. It's, it's just a plain quinoa right now. So mm -hmm. if you want to spice up a little bit, you can. Yeah. But now, how uh, long I'm does the quinoa have to cook? So like, till, like till the water goes away? Yeah, it yeah. cooks really it quick. Fifteen minutes. Okay. Okay. Put it on. Good. I always put it on really low, so I don't have to worry about paying attention. Because unlike rice, which takes forever, if, quinoa. If you're on very low, then it might take 20 minutes. But I think if you were putting on medium high, then it's 12 to 15 minutes. So, Deepa, I'm putting, so I, you think I should saute the tofu butter? Yeah, you can always a little bit of butter and then just saute it for two to three minutes and then it's fine. You don't need to do more than that. And then are we going to add more to that pan? No, you need to take it out because we'll be adding tofu or uh, paneer or cheese at the end. So I personally like the tofu. I feel like tofu doesn't really have any taste. So I like adding it to stuff for a texture or a protein without much taste. But that's because I grew up eating a lot of tofu, maybe. So now I will be mincing up the garlic. All right. Maybe. Do you have too much garlic? No. Okay, wait. Um, yeah, we need a lot of garlic for this. It's like a... Do you have the spinach cooking in the pan or it's not? No, it's it just butter is heating up. Got it. So. All right. And I'm just chopping off some garlic. Like uh, six to seven cloves, the medium size is enough, I guess. There's never enough. <laughs> okay. So I don't know. One trick I learned about garlic is if you just get the flat of your knife and you push it with the heel. Mm -hmm. Crush it flat like that, then you go across the grain and you don't have to cut it both directions. You only have to cut it one direction for for big, big mints. So this is how much I'm using. So I guess I, I cheated. I got ones that's already peeled or even. So how many cloves is that that, I, that you have? Uh, six to seven, uh, if you have medium size garlic. Based on how garlicky. Yeah, how much garlic you like. But I'm making it like garlicky kind of spinach. So I'm using more, more garlic. To that. So do I just put this in the pan to fry it? Yeah, uh, heat must be a little bit higher. So we are browning the garlic first. So basically, this will be, yeah, this is. And if you want, you can add ginger to this. Ooh, I got some good fresh, good fresh ginger. Good idea. All right. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm going to use all this garlic. Double it up. And if you want, you can add turmeric to this. It's it's fine. I got you thinking my way. I got some fresh turmeric. 
But I cook like with turmeric and okay. ginger in a lot of things. Uh, I like a little bit of heat on this, so I'm adding a uh, one chili. So, what kind of chili? Let's see. Ah, oh, this. Roasted garlic smells so good. Yeah. Let's see. All right, so I got a whole bunch of garlic frying. And I'm using a little bit of uh, ginger. If you want, you can add it or it's fine. It's just optional. I mean, probably the amount of ginger I put in, I consider a little bit. For other people, this would probably be a lot. But I love, love, love fresh ginger and turmeric. Or I guess my body loves it. It makes me feel really happy. So as you see, it's browning. So yeah, it's browning. So it might add our this blanched spinach. Can you see how orange that is? Fresh turmeric, so bright and orange. So, so let's see. So you fried the garlic. And then you're just adding the spinach, and then you're just going to slowly cook it down? Or fast? No, we, uh, for two to three minutes, not more than that, because we want this green color in it, so we are not cooking much. Because spinach doesn't take time to be cooked. So most and of this, I mean, you could probably make this whole meal in like 20 minutes. Yeah. You start the quinoa, that. and then you just make the spinach to go with it? Mm-hmm. It's here. really easy, and uh, because spinach all has its own salt, so if you are using salted butter, then it's better not to use any salt. But if you're using unsalted butter, then a little bit of salt is fine. But we can go like way more in salt always because we don't realize like spinach already has its salt. So just a little bit of salt is fine. So we are cooking till it has a little bit of boil in it. And our quinoa is almost ready now. It's almost Well, done. now that I dumped the spinach in here, I don't think I blended it enough. Oh. Because mine had a lot of stems compared to oh, looking oh. at yours. Yeah, we just, we are making like a puree. Puree right. kind of. Well, I hit the puree button on the blender, so shouldn't that make it a puree? Yeah, it should have. So yeah, I don't I think I hit it long enough. <laughs> black paper to this. Ooh. There you go. Someone was asking, where's the spice? And now we're adding it up. Now, I heard you, you were uh, grinding some fresh black pepper, huh? Yeah. Do you ever use the one that's already pre-ground? Yeah, we can use any. Just no. uh, as your preference, like if you like lots of black pepper. Yeah, I know a lot of people um, are purists with spices and they like only using fresh ground. Mm -hmm. But I think it just means and that if it's if it's already pre-ground, it just, it starts losing its flavor or? My quinoa is done. So it should be like light and fluffy like this. It's light and fluffy. All right, mine is, ooh, the funny, if, if this is anybody's first time making quinoa, 
for me, it always weirded me out where it looks like it ha it's a bunch of little worms. Oh, now we see the bubbles. Uh, can you guys see yeah. the bubbles here in the spinach? So yeah. we can say like it's cooked. So are the uh, This is Himalayan pink salt that I like to use because uh, it it's not much saltier like sea salt or this little bit of this salt. Oh wait, I mean. What we call Himalaya salt, you call normal salt? Um, no, but I like to, uh, we call it something else. <laughs> I don't know the particular name uh, because it's new, but I like to use it while cooking because sea salt is like too salty for us. So I like to use Himalayan salt. I wonder why I like Himalayan salt better because I don't, I don't really like it very salty. So I think then it's better to use Himalayan pink salt because it's not that salty. Hmm. So mine, my spinach is definitely, I should have put it in the blender longer because I had a lot of stems. I think it'll still taste good, but it's definitely not uh, pureed. It's definitely like more chunky. So I'm putting uh, like a half a cup and of uh, this cottage cheese. Oh yeah, I forgot. Oh, well, I also forgot black pepper. If you Let's have see. paneer, you can add paneer at this point, or if you have tofu, you can add tofu on this point. Ooh, I get to do I get to do a reference. If you go to a, my YouTube channel, I have a recipe on how to make fresh paneer. Oh. Like, yep. Whenever I have old milk, we call it farmstead cheese. But yeah, it's how to make fresh cheese. Okay. And so if you've ever had sog paneer, yeah. basically, it's just mm -hmm. chunks of that fresh cheese. So yeah. I feel okay. all special now referencing my YouTube channel. <laughs> I need to take on that, I'm sure. What's the title for that? I think it's just homemade cheese. Okay. We will be cooking this till it gets a boil a little bit and then we're done. With this. Now I will be taking... But did you take the, you did, took, did you take it off? Before you no. put, no, 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 no. It, it's still in the heat. It, it needs to have a little bit of boil, like the bubble. Can we see the bubble so that the spinach is cooked thoroughly? Yeah. All right. So it's cooked. And some people like to add lime on top of it, Ooh. but. Uh, it's all your preference if you want to add. I think lime. I'm going to have to. I forgot to add that you put a little chili in, or a little pepper in there, and I forgot to add that. Mm -hmm. So I think I'll probably have to add some because I like it spicy. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, me too. So could you just pour some lime juice on it? Or I don't know. Uh, lime okay. juice after, is a little too after sour. Then, Cooking, you can add a little bit of lime juice on top of it because with greens, I think lime goes better. All right, let's see here. I think the quinoa is the quinoa part of it is you do it for like 15 minutes and then you shut it off and let it steam in the pot. So, I, uh, I'm using double boiler to melt my chocolate. I'm trying to tamper the chocolate. I think it's called tampering when you use a double boiler. Can you see so, the quinoa on the, no, it's oh, good. Yeah. The camera's not yeah. very good. Why it but, looks like cheese? Um, if you, the weird thing about quinoa is the little sprouts, it looks like it's got a zillion little worms in it once it's cooked there. And I don't, I don't think you can see it on the camera. But the first time I made quinoa, I was like, ew, that looks horrible. But, all right. 
So I have to try to figure out how to make a double boiler. Let's see here. Probably a pot with water and then a bowl, a, a, um, and then a bowl. I think I could do that. Yeah, just a little bit of water and your heat would be like really low. You can actually touch Let's the see, a, pot. That'll probably work, I think. Yeah, so that, that that well, it's, it's perfect. I've never used that, but that that'll work. So, I've just got about two inches of water in the bottom, and then put that and in there. And you the bottom of your this uh, the chocolate pan. It's like a handful of chocolate. Oh, I'm a little behind you. I have a quick question. So, in the pan, I sautéed the garlic and ginger, and I added turmeric and pepper. Then I put the spinach in. Yeah. And it's starting to bubble. And then yeah. what, what's next? And then, and then you put a little bit of salt, if you like. Okay. To it, and then you can add your tofu and then let it bubble for a few more minutes, like two minutes, not more than that. Yeah. And then you Let me see what yours looks like. So I know how much. So yours is cottage cheese. Yes. So mine's going to be chunkier. Is that okay? With the yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And cool. you put whatever spices you like in there. Okay. Um, yeah. So I guess the the cheese, the cheese and and or the tofu um, gives it like a creaminess and mm -hmm. a texture and a protein. So yeah, I mean it's it's very similar to um, sag paneer, except sag paneer has the chunks of cheese in it. Mine looks if you look at mine, mine looks completely different. Than hers. See, I put way too much cottage cheese. And then the spinach, I didn't blend it as much. So it's more chunky. I'm sure it'll taste this good, but it won't have that creamy um, consistency. Okay. Let me see if I can catch up with you, Deepa. So, chocolate, we're melting. Yeah, we need to first boil the water. I mean, uh, it shouldn't be, it can, uh, I think when the vapor comes out of water and then we will be putting this and make sure that you don't have any water on your, this, uh, this can, this pot. Otherwise it won't be tampered nicely. It won't be like as smooth as it, it should be. So underneath it should be no water. So it's like touching the bottom, but I'm around the outside. Okay, that's fine. But uh, on this, are you using bitter, bitter sweet chocolate? Yeah, this is a bitter bitter sweet chocolate. Yes, I got the wrong right kind by mistake. <laughs> it's usually, fine. Usually, I get the you know the the, the semi sweet or the sweet. Those are very mm. very common for baking, right? Around here. So. Okay. All right, let's get this water boiling. So, L Lulu, you're almost keeping up with the cooking part. I, I feel I feel like I'm way was way behind. But I haven't started the water for the chocolate yet. But I think my I could show you my and uh, the heat should be like on a low, like really low. It's like really, it's boiling, but you can be able to touch the pot. So I shouldn't like turn it really hot and then turn it down once oh, it's boiling. No, I, I okay. would yeah. yeah. The whole idea is it can't get too hot in a double boiler. Yeah. And you need the right consistency for that. Okay, I'm using this banana. I'm just using one. And uh, banana okay. like really goes brown fat. I have never only bought two, but look, look how green these are. I was just like, good. I was just like, yeah, that's the only ones they had at the store. Like so unless awesome. you want to make uh, patacones or something that tastes <laughs> like plantains. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I was just watching some <laughs> show. Uh, yeah, you can fr tour fry that talking. up and then put it in chocolate. I think you can um, ripen bananas in the microwave if you have a microwave. I don't. Yeah, I well, I have one out in the garage purposely, so I don't use it. 
<laughs> except when I'm cooking massive amounts. Like today, today I uh, cooked, I have like a kind of, a, uh, kind of a kitchen in the garage. And today I, I catered a friend's graduation. And so made a taco bar. So, all right. Nanner. One thing I, so how, uh, uh, real serious question. If you have a banana, which end do you open the banana at? You're actually supposed to open it at the opposite the stem. <laughs> When everybody really opens it at the other end. Everybody opens it with the stem. I like Just, to open it at, like holding the stem and then you open it up here. Yeah. And then you have a handle that's way, yeah. to eat it by. They say that's the way you should do it, but everybody does it the other direction. Yeah. I don't know I, why. I do you try it with your green banana or? No, look, it won't come off. It's totally oh. green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> look at this. I mean. No, wait for that to ripen. Look at this. <laughs> no. Like it ain't gonna work. Oh, you can fry them actually. Like I think we can really yeah, good. You can fry it. That would help. Or fry it, cool it, and then dip it in the chocolate. Yeah. Slice <laughs> it up. Slice it up thin and like you're making banana chips. Last week, if he had sweet chocolate instead of bitter sweeten up the banana so i mean that that's the problem with bananas in the u.s is they pick them completely green yeah to ship them across the country and then people are like how come bananas don't take i literally i've never bought a banana so green that i have to use a knife to cut off the peel like i'm a, using a bit like of lime juice. but i Maybe. usually buy the bananas that are completely so and totally overripe by most down. people's standards because I like them ready to eat. Deep has got the next step to explain. Yeah. Yeah. If you use lime juice a little bit so it doesn't uh, go brown fast and it just remains white for a long time. Wow. So that's the trick I learned. Can I use lemon juice instead of lime for yeah, my? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, any any acidic thing works, Ooh. like apple cider vinegar, or you can put a little bit of water and then just a little bit. Use, yeah, so a little can, apple cider vinegar, but you know you don't want to use. Long time, then that's uh, really good. It it doesn't go brown or mushy kind of thing. Okay, here's the taste. I'm gonna literally taste one of these green bananas. Okay, that tastes completely bitter. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh my I God. <laughs> okay, I now I know why I buy super eat. ripe bananas. Yeah. I mean, I, my my whole face bananas. puckered up. Nick, actually, I mean, you cannot solve anything if you eat like unripe banana. It just gets to your throat. Like that. So I'm going to. There, are, gonna there are some. There are some varieties of bananas that are ripe when they're green. Yeah, we do find it in our country. It's green from outside, but it's ripened from inside. How many chocolate chips do you think? A handful, like my handful. So. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, my handful is the whole bag. <laughs> 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 like, oh, look, there's my handful. No, it's Half of your handful. Half. <laughs> so there's my peanut butter. You can use almond butter or anything. Uh, it shouldn't have to be like peanut butter all the time. It could be anything. Yeah. I don't know. I'm opening this peanut butter and I don't eat much peanut butter. And it says used by April 2022. Uh, hopefully oh, yeah. you can... You're good. Not a whole year. <laughs> <laughs> Actually. We had a previous show where we made this really tasty peanut butter sauce. You oh, with this that? With I'll the have to go back and look at that recipe because that was good. It didn't even taste like peanut butter. Is there oil on the top of your peanut butter or not? Nope. So that's been homogenized. Yeah, this is like the cheap stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, this one actually says it's got molasses in it. Yeah, they add sugar to it a lot. Yeah. Now, this one doesn't, it has sugar, but it has molasses. I've never seen peanut well, butter. Well, a little before. tip is if you get almond butter or peanut butter where the oil is on the top, you put the cap on tight and put it upside down, and then the oil will gravitate to the bottom. Now the yeah. water has started uh, this vapor. Now I will be adding my chocolate and just let it rest for some time. So my bowl is, bo but like you can tell it's boiling under there because the, the bowl is like moving a little bit. Oh, that might so be I think like, it's too hot. Can you, can you toss that bowl? Like can, can your hand, no, not inside, not inside, outside, like on the top. Like it, it, it should be boiling underneath, but it should, you, you should be able to touch it so that it's not overheated. You're, well, that's as low as I can do it, and it's 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 still simmering. Okay. But yeah, then you can put chocolate. Okay, it's fine. I think it will be yeah. pretty soon. So yeah, the peanut butter I like buying is there's a small community in Iowa called Eastwind, and mm -hmm. they they make all their own nut butters. Um. And so yeah, it's like really good quality. I feel. So Amazing you're supposed, taste. I'm sorry, or to cut you off, but I'm trying to cook. What you're putting, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're putting peanut butter on top of just yeah. one half of the slices? One, one half, one half of the slice. Okay, so half the slice is covered with peanut butter and then the other half will be covered with chocolate? No, no you will. Uh, just on one side. Oh, okay. you put, this and then you yeah, just that like, a like a sandwich. Okay. Um, so half a peanut butter and the other half are you put on top in a sandwich. Yeah, like this. Wish I had some peanut butter, <laughs> chocolate chips. <laughs> I have peanut butter, but I don't yeah, have yeah. or chocolate. No chocolate. You're like me. You ate it oh, all, didn't you? I no, I have chocolate, but I have like expensive like fancy bar chocolate that i'm not gonna that yeah i would use chocolate chips for this but not my fancy chocolate all um, right and i don't have bananas let's see okay so you're just making a peanut butter banana sandwich like yes yeah. Yeah. i'm gonna I'm going to make it with these bitter ones because that's all I have. And then I'm going to have to let it sit for a week, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Just like. Well, if uh, your chocolate's not real sweet, it's, you may have to add sugar to your chocolate. Yeah. How, how much peanut butter do you put between it? Just enough to stick? Because I think I'm putting too much. Uh, just a little bit. Uh, how much you like. It doesn't really matter. Um, yes. Well. I think that's what I like about this cooking show is it's exactly opposite of any other cooking show. It shows all the mistakes. <laughs> They're just like, here, I bought green bananas because that's all they had. <laughs> and then it didn't work. <laughs> My gyro sandwich, when I made it with the uh, pork, uh, the lamb chops was out of this world. Sounds good. So I actually tried to make it later with some um, turkey, thinking, okay, it'll be as good. It was not. <laughs> it was just like, because um, I mean, you know, I mean, lamb is not very cheap. And yeah. so I was just like, here, let me try it. And I tried different things. And so, yeah, I mean. Yeah, good lamb is really good. Definitely <clears throat> worth it. I was impressed. I mean, I just ate a, a lamb chop all by itself because I was hungry. <laughs> I'm uh, like, or. All right. This seems, when I first started making these like peanut butter banana sandwiches, I thought that's going to be a lot of work, but I'm enjoying this. This is fun. It's just Kinda like, like a little art, art class. Yeah, a little meditative here. And it's like doing a craft. Yeah. I'm not, In in daycare, they make ants on a log, peanut yeah. butter on bananas and with raisins walking along the top. <laughs> That's cute. 
so good. It is a great flavor combination. That, that being said, have any of you guys ever made dirt cake? No. no. I've never made it, but I've had it. So yeah, I mean, there's there's two versions. You can just get basically chocolate pudding and crushed up chocolate uh, cookies or brownies and put it in there and then get make jello worms and put it on top of that. Um, or you can, you know, bake a brownie and then you put the chocolate pudding on top and then some crushed up brownie bits and or, um, you know, like um, like an Oreo or a crushed up cookie. But the best part I remember as a kid um, was ma was making the jello worms. So we would we would just get the you you just make jello and then you pour it in a straw and fill up the straw and then you'd get the ribs of the worms even. Yeah, so maybe we'll make that sometime in the future. So as a thank you, I, I volunteered at the, the garden gala where I grilled all that. They gave me this watermelon apron. Yeah. Hand, oh. Handmade. That's awesome. It's got a pocket right here so I can keep, uh, I don't know, um, if I get sick, I guess. I don't know. It's, <laughs> it seems a little awkward spot for a, a pocket, but no. It'd be perfect if you had glasses. You could just put your glasses in there. There you go. We're listening to music. You can put the cell phone here. Oh, and... yeah. You put. Yeah. It's like. But yeah, I mean, so whenever I buy aprons, usually, let's see if I can. I'll switch cameras so you can see my lower. Oops. Turned it off instead. Uh -huh. um, usually, the apron string is not long enough to tie my around my big belly in just barely in the back but this one's a proper apron where it goes all the way around to the front again that's like and so i was just like yeah so all right my chocolate is almost melted but testing my quinoa and you can put it like jam instead of uh, peanut butter. Uh, yeah, but it will be like really sweet because banana is sweet and chocolate is sweet. So uh, it will be really, really sweet. Very sweet because jam is sweet, banana is sweet, and then so how? Is sweet. So we do, need do, I think we need to balance it a little bit with peanut butter, like saltiness to have. I think that chocolate's melted enough. I don't know if. Yeah, uh, mine is melted enough. It should I, be like. The, it just has to be melted enough to be able to dip the. Oh, uh, it should be the. Oh, mine's not that that liquidy yet. You can like uh, use a pan and then just uh, like a uh, spatula and then just move around it. So. Oh my god, that looks really good. Oh and... uh, yeah. <laughs> Deepa, talking? stop teasing us. Yeah, when you no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe when you stir it, it'll it'll start to get more liquid. Do I toast the sesame seeds or just? Um, it's up to you, but I don't uh, I don't usually toast it. I just like to use it raw. Okay, I'll do it that way. And if you toast toast sesame seeds, you got to stay right with them, or they'll burn in a flash. <laughs> so uh, I I don't like to I mean I like the rawness of the sesame seeds while eating with this so I don't really toast it so this is my sesame seed and uh, trying to see apparently I don't have any sesame seeds easy to get here. So what I do is I got a, a I forgot. Here sesame. goes the dipping. Ooh. So yeah, I use a fork and just use half of this just to. Can we make her video bigger? Or can you spotlight her video? 
Well, if you unpin or then you'll she'll take up the whole pen. She's she is spotlighted. I want her video to be big because I can't see what she's doing. She is spotlighted. It's just she's in vertical mode with her. Oh, maybe phone. I need speaker view. Oh, I put it on speaker view. Now I can see. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Instead of using my fingers, I'm gonna use the fork. Oh, that is cool. Look at that. And you dip them in the sesame. Oh, yeah, you can nice. use sprinkles if you like. No, oh, I like that. That's sesame. so pretty. Cool. And can you do it, do it Nutella instead of chocolate chips? Sure. You could, but this. But it needs to settle down. I don't know if Nutella would. Uh, right, this right hard, here, when it cools, the chocolate hardens. Yeah, it hardens, but you could, uh, if you wanted to, if you're more in a rush, you could have a cold plate. That you put. Well, I mean, on. you could just have this as a snack, just peanut butter sandwiches and Nutella. Mm -hmm. So my bananas are too green. I can't even put a fork in it. Oh, I'm having to use my fingers. It's so horrible because I have to lick my finger after each one. <laughs> So they'll look good, but the green. So this will be one of those fancy chef plates that you can't eat, right? <laughs> Just for pictures. Well, Just for a chef, the, pres the presentation is more important than the taste. <laughs> Actually, a friend of mine was making a cookbook and I watched them taking the pictures and you couldn't eat any of the food they did after they made the picture because they had lacquered it up and spray painted it. Exactly. And kind of <laughs> yeah, so like, I knew a woman who was a food photographer the same way. And it was like <laughs> all this fake stuff. To, and there was some stuff that wasn't even food to make it look like food. <laughs> I was like, whoa. But I and, enjoyed and that you... them making that cookbook because I got to eat all the, the test stuff. And you can actually make it with white chocolate as well. It doesn't always Okay, happen. white chocolate's not chocolate. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Yeah, that's what, okay, A contradiction of terms. Well, it, 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 it's made chocolate. from cocoa, so I guess you could be all technical about it, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm using a little bit of a sprinkler in some just to make it look fancy. Really cool. If you have kids, in your house then you can use sprinkler okay we'll use your picture because of this instead of mine because okay. mine is not looking very good but my fingers are looking very clean after i dip them in the chocolate and lick them oh and i have a leftover chocolate oh i have some strawberries there's no such thing <laughs> Yeah, never. So I'm using strawberries and then I will chew. Ah, nice. good thinking. Why yeah. didn't I think of that? So just put it around. It's oh, I have these mangoes. Maybe there you go. Chocolate Chop a piece of mango, mango out and that... put it in chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> this one looks really good. All right. You're not saying about mine because mine do not look good. Because we cannot see it. Oh. You, know, you can pin or the plate looks good. I just put it around the edge of the plate. But it doesn't look like banana. Mm -hmm -hmm. Oops, I got a little more chocolate on my finger. Now I got it on my hand. Lulu's look good. They're so neat. Yeah. They're kind of falling apart over here. Oh. <laughs> they'll still taste good. Just stick them in the freezer and they'll harden up. Yeah. yeah. My peanut Thank butter you. is from the fridge, so it was really stiff to work on. But now that it's getting to be room temperature, it's almost too gooey now. It's the kind with the oil that you got to mix. I feel like any good peanut butter, you have to mix the that. 
Shouldn't be anything in peanut butter, but peanuts and salt. All right. Now I will tell you, I have one banana left and I'll, we, we can report each week how long it takes to actually ripen sitting out on the counter. <laughs> Plan for another banana recipe a week from today. <laughs> this is like a banana sandwich. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a couch surfer coming. When? Right now, I think he's at the door. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I got my mask on. So let's see. Do we, any final things we want to wrap up, Deepa? We got yeah, it. I, I just paid it up and then I'll just show you guys and then we can. Right? Oh, yeah. I guess I need to plate mine too. So let's see. Everybody plate it up. Let's see who. Well, I already know Deepa's going to win the yeah. photo contest. Deepa or Blue? <clears throat> But that's a lot of quinoa. Okay. Now do you all right? I like quinoa. All right. So Okay, so how are you plating it? What's that? I'm putting in a bowl. Okay. Just quinoa and this. And like it, it still needs to be settled on, so I just put it in the fridge and then get it on. My spinach came out a little liquidy still. I wonder. How's that? Just quinoa and spinach, right? Yeah, quinoa and spinach. Good. And I have this, so. So. Yeah, I made the whole bag of quinoa, so I made this whole pot of quinoa. This will be enough for a few days. Um, a lot of quinoa. I, I like making a big pot of rice or a big pot of quinoa or you know gr a grain usually I do that Sunday morning and then um oh look at that so this is my tape all right thanks yeah take uh -huh. a picture and put that on if you can screen off this nice okay. presentation yeah beautiful yeah, take a good picture of that and put we can oh. put it on, on on the Facebook. So, so uh, thank you, everybody. Okay. Does anybody have any final questions for Deepa before wrap up? Thank you so much, Deepa. I Yay. I especially like the spinach. Um, I'm gonna next time blend it more. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's see. I guess it helps if you're talking to me when you can see my face um, or not. I don't know. Um, next time I do it, I think I'll blend it more because I had a lot of stocks in it. And so to make it much more smooth and um, put a little less uh, cottage cheese because I put a lot, but because it doesn't quite look like yours, but. Okay, I'm giving this to my husband. Please.
Thank you, Deepa. Thank did you, you did you take a picture of it, Deepa? No, I haven't, but I have left over. I'll take picture from okay. a mother. All right. Let me Thank see. you. Before we go, I want to show.